got to say, very proud of you, uh, Willis. I've actually seen you in action this morning. Very proud. Uh, progress is continues here, and I am joined by a power woman uh, since it is Monday. Her name is Sadaf Dean. She is a women rep aspirant for Mombasa County, but her story, very interesting. Model turned politician. So let's talk about the modeling aspects of your life first. How long have you been doing uh, that? First of all, I would like to start my morning by passing on my condolence to the senator of uh, the late senator to, of the Kuali, Kuali County, uh, Boy Juma Boy. Uh, I didn't get the opportunity to meet him, but uh, I guess the coastal um, people have lost a very vibrant leader. Yeah. About you asking me my modeling, I started my modeling last year basically. And um, then I decided since I was on the groundwork and everything, decided to give my services out as a politician. Wow, that's yes. quite a leap there. <laughs> but uh, you were telling me off, off camera a bit about your businesses as well, because you are a businesswoman yes. in addition to being a model. So maybe you can speak about that. Um, I actually, after my studies, after I got my certificate of business administration, I was in India at that time and um, I, I uh, invested in, in get, getting clothes manufactured. I do do distribution of clothes basically and uh, under, my com um, under my company Shadi Group Limited we do events management, public relations, marketing and we run a modeling agency whereby we give youth the opportunity to a platform basically for uh, for modeling because modeling and fashion is is a platform it's a it's a high end platform mm -hmm. in today's world because yeah. before people used to think modeling is something wrong but today it's actually a very high occupation for well people. you've spoken about giving youth a platform but you are a youth yourself do yeah. you mind sharing your age <laughs> i just turned 20 on the 25th december you just turned 20? Yes, I turned 20 last year, 21st December. Wow. I celebrated my birthday on Christmas. Now, is there uh, politics in your family? I mean, where did that idea come from? For um, you to I have no family member who's been running. Actually, I'm the first one in my whole family. So, yeah, it's tough, but uh, I'm looking forward for it. Uh, it's something that I want to do for my community and for my people. And what has country. been the response of your family? Ah, <laughs> uh, they're very supportive. They're they're really proud of me. And a very young age I've taken a very big step. Yes. Yes, they're very proud of me and I'm really thankful. So you're running uh, you're vying for uh women rep, Mombasa yes. County. I mean this idea couldn't have just come out of the blue like that. Because <laughs> it seems like you know, I'm having a hard time putting the two together of your background and then now doing uh politics. So where did the idea come from? Okay, um Basically, when I started doing my business, which is events management, and uh, I've done a lot of events, more of fashion events. So I used to be more on my groundwork, you know, meeting new people and women and youth. Whereby they only they used to come and ask me, "Oh, can I get an opportunity? Can I do this? Can I do that?" So me being on that groundwork, you know, there's so many people who complained, and, and I had a half hard time explaining me that. Um, People in Mombasa, to be honest, are lied to, especially in politics, whereby they're being promised but are not being delivered. So me deciding about getting into politics is because I did my groundwork even before I decided to come on the seat or to, to vie for this seat, basically. And um, I really thought that I should give a chance to everyone or, 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 or give myself a chance to deliver my services since I'm already doing it before I even decided to come here and me, me deciding for this would give me a, a, a better chance to let everyone know about it mm -hmm. that here you are there you go I'm, I'm giving you a chance to have a platform for yourself so uh, I have been working on a lot of um, businesses and investments not only for Kenya but also out of the country whereby I met the former president of Ethiopia last year basically for, uh, for some investments in Ethiopia for health health sector whereby we are going to be building a huge hospital for and, and uh, education as well mm -hmm. where you can treat yourself and uh, like people cannot afford there's so many people cannot afford like treating cancer they have to go to US or to UK so we are basically um, building this hospital for the former president um, 
His Excellency World uh, Dr. Girma World Churches. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was his dream to build this hospital where anyone could access and, uh, and uh, treat themselves at a reasonable way. Mm -hmm. uh, whereby we're going to be having an, institu an institute where you can learn how to treat people, basically, that's a doctrine mm -hmm. and stuff. So, if I could do this for other countries, why can't I do it for my country as well? Right. Yeah. So, uh, for me, to, for me to, to take these steps, it was tough, but I decided to do it. Now, I'm curious to hear your comments about, uh, w you know, youth have been, um, have been said to be not really politically aware. Uh, you know, we had a discussion here on the show a couple weeks ago of young people who had not registered to vote. And they just say, you know what, politics is for, for old people. <laughs> so, so how do you, you know, what are your thoughts about that, first of all? About, I don't you know, believe, young people I don't believe that engaged. politics, politics ain't something for old people. I mean, politics ain't for retirement, I think, because I many people believe you get married, you get kids, and then that's a retirement job. No, politics is something that you need to do um, when you're young. Because you're growing, you're learning, yourself, you need to know what you want in this country. So you can make a change. It's, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of the quote or the saying, say it's charity starts from home. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I don't really think that politics is, politics needs young people where you have new thoughts and new agendas to deliver. Yeah. So do you think that uh, there is a problem with the, the current leadership? I mean, for you to, to buy for women, rep, it means that there's something that you're bringing to the table. So do you see issues um, that are in existence right now? Okay. Uh, let's see, women in Mombasa, to be honest, are, are, are mostly like to, as I say. And um, wherever you prom before getting into the political seat, you promise them a lot of things. And at the end of the day, you're not able to deliver. I can't really judge someone or I can't really point out on someone that this person didn't do. Whatever leaders can do in their capacity, they do at a given time. So for me to come on this, this seat, of course I have something on the table for the people out there, which is my high five agendas that I'm working and focusing on. One is women and youth empowerment, whereby I'm looking at women and youth being empowered and being uh, pushed to a platform where they can do something for themselves. Uh, mostly a lot of women can, can not access to a, a lot of things like high job, high, high, uh, good jobs, I mean top, top jobs, highly paid uh, uh, jobs and you see we youth are not getting places or I, cannot, I, ca I can see are not getting employment or education mm -hmm. so which, which is a, a very sad thing for, for someone like me to know, you see. I, I, was, I studied at a good place, to be honest. I, I, I studied in the UK, I studied in India. And uh, me as a youth, I would not want things to be done only for myself. Mm -hmm. I would want my community also to have it, my, my people in Kenya to have it as well. It's sad to know that Kenya does not have much of facil facilities, especially in Mombasa, do not have much of uh, facilities for women, uh, where I see there are a lot of women that have a lot of talent, more have in tailoring, sewing, farmery, and, and a lot of things, you see. But they do not have a platform to, to, to do best for themselves, you see. So if, like, I've done my groundwork, and usually I do meet a lot of youth, a lot of women, whereby you go to them and, and um, I can give you maybe money for today to eat. And, but it's a question to ask, for how long will you eat that money? Right. You need, you need a platform or you need an opportunity in your life where you can make your bread and butter every single day mm -hmm. rather than being dependent on, on some politician or a leader to come and do something for you. So I am focusing on development and growth, which is my second agenda I'm working on and uh, focusing on, whereby I'm looking at development of uh, giving opportunities to people to open up businesses. Like um, if, if people are talented in, in tailoring, like five people, if five people come together and, and uh, uh, sew clothes, mm -hmm. uh, that's a whole big company running, I mean, and, and, and you can push that to a manufacturing company and then be that. Uh, so, so there are a lot of opportunities in Kenya. There's a lot of hidden talent in in Kenya as a, as as an event management company. I have seen a lot of talent where people know how to sing, people know how to play sports, people know how to do a lot of things, but they do not have a platform. 
So us as a leader, we need to do something. We, we, we need to give them a platform to do something. Well, I'm, I'm focusing on much of these things. So have you um, had any backlash come your way of someone saying, you know, she's a mother, what does she know about politics, or she's a woman, and, you know, she's young. You know, you have all these things kind of going against the grain in terms of what we typically think of a politician being in this country. It's true. Actually, uh, I, I did face a lot of challenges when I started my groundwork and my campaigns in Mombasa. And I met a lot of annoyed women who, 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 who were expecting a lot but uh, haven't got anything yet. So I am facing a lot of challenges uh, whereby, you know, they come around and say, oh, you know, we were promised, we elected someone, but uh, we haven't got anything. So what makes you say mm -hmm. you will do for me? So it's for me to explain them and make them understand that, you see, I'm, even if I come with 10 million shillings, I mean, for how many years are you going to have it for? So I'm looking for them to have a business or, you know, something to do for themselves where their kids and, and, and their, their future generation can have something for themselves. Uh, for me to um, to 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 see how these how I need, I need to um, face these challenges. Mm -hmm. It's tough, but uh, so you feel like you're the one to break the glass ceiling, yes. you know, so to speak. I, I think I need to make I need to put my foot down for it. If no one will, mm -hmm. yes. And which party are you affiliated with? Uh, I haven't decided any party. I don't want to make any differences in ones, uh, you know, because in Kenya I've seen uh, people support according to the parties. I haven't decided any party yet. Um, I've given that to my campaign managers to deal with it. But mm -hmm. um, soon, I just want to focus on what I want to deliver right now, my services that I want to deliver to them, is what I'm focusing much on mm -hmm. uh, than choosing a party at the moment. Now, your background in, in fashion and modeling, I mean, are there any skills that you have taken from your background to bring into, into politics? Um, well, I think, uh, I can't say I have any, any, any skills that I've used of modeling in politics. I mean, mo politics and modeling are way too different <laughs> things. Right. Um, well, for my politics, I think the only skills I, I would want to give is the youth, where they can know. Being friendly to a camera is not easy. I'm sure you know about it. Mm -hmm. So, there are some people out there who have the talent to do it, but they do not have a way to do it. So um, for me to, to mix up things with modeling and politics, no, mm -hmm. not really. <laughs> not really. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of young people watching and it, it's intriguing to them to find out that, you know, at the age of 20, you're going to be a uh, women rep. So maybe you can encourage uh, young people watching to get involved in the political process because I, I voter registration uh, you know ending pretty soon here and there are a large number of young people who have not registered to vote yes and I would urge them to come out of their house and go and get your voting registrations done because you see you need to make a difference to be honest I mean you, you need to do something for your country and if you don't take a step right now I don't think it will be too late by then mm -hmm. and if you want to do something in your life do it right now don't wait for tomorrow or don't wait for the next 10 or 2 years that oh you know I'll get it done when I get some capital you don't really need a capital you need your talent you need your skills and go out there and look for your bread and butter because money won't knock to your door and, and mm -hmm. come and say here I am so it's a hustle life is all about hustle do it right now don't do it later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I have to say to the youth. And uh, I would want them to make a difference right now. I am doing it, and I want them to do it. It's hard, but it's going to be easy later. Right. Now, we're living in a uh, day and age of social media, where social media is quite important. Um, is that something that you have been using as part of your campaign? And have you found that useful to sort of reach out to that demographic of young people? Yes, actually, I do use a lot of social media, actually, that's, that's the 21st century mm -hmm. where everyone is on social media, everything is, is uh, at a higher level of, of uh, so yes, I, I do use my social media and uh, I do try reaching to people through social media as well, whereby I can see, you know, there are some places where there are places hidden, you know, and, and people want to meet me and want to speak to me that, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that in life and I'd want you to support me. 
So I do get the opportunity to speak to them and, and uh, through social media, through, through a lot of social media platforms. And, and I think it's, it's a good idea and a good a better option for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. So what does the future of uh, Mombasa County look like with you as woman rep? Um, see, as I said, I'm focusing more on my high five agendas, which is women and youth empowerment, development and growth, number two. Number three is uh, equity in uh, distribution of resources and um, healthcare sector and leadership, whereby I'm looking at development in Mombasa and platforms to be given to the youth and women, mm -hmm. where they can do something for themselves. I've already started uh, some projects in Mombasa, which is uh, the Akamba community where they do the sculpting of wood crafts and, and things like that. I did uh, pay a visit uh, during my groundwork and my campaigns to them and uh, it was really sad for me seeing their factories were broken down. If you go and, and, and look at their, their sculptures and stuff, it's way beautiful. I mean, that's, that's the, the, the beauty of Kenya. They have the art, they have the talent, but it was sad for me to see them hustling and making that in such heat and broken down factories was sad for me. So I, I paid a visit to them and, and I decided that I would uh, want to make a development where I would be rebuilding their factories. I should be paying uh, a visit next week most probably to see materials be needed to build and rebuild the place back again. Uh, second thing is schools, whereby I've been visiting some schools and they need um, renovations done and they, we need to rebuild the walls and get them painted again because you see children are children at the end of the day you know you cannot let children suffer and study in places where they're not happy yet. Mm -hmm. and uh, I, I decided to make the place more better so that they can enjoy learning the place they are in and enjoy doing their studies I mean I was a child and I, I always wish for better for something even though I had the best I still wish for something way better, you see. Like children have dreams in their life. So I, I'm really focusing on things like these mm -hmm. to be done in Mombasa, even though I'm not yet in the seat <laughs> yet. <laughs> right. So yeah. maybe you can just give us a, a final word to any naysayers watching who are, you know, still contemplating of, of, of whether to take you seriously as a, as a politician, because I'm sure there's, there's a couple out there. Uh, you know, what would you tell that person who doesn't quite believe in, in your vision and well, why they should vote for you? Um, the reason they should vote for me is uh, it's the vision I have for Mombasa, for a better tomorrow, for a better humanity. It's not that I need anything from anyone. Uh, I want the best for everyone is the reason why I decided to take a, such a big step. It's tough for me. It's very tough for me. Yeah. Trust me, it's very <laughs> tough for me. But I'm doing it. I'm, I'm, I've put my foot down to do it for the people out there. So I, I have something good for you to do, not something bad or, or you know, something to have a competition with. So I would just want everyone to believe in me. I, I, I know uh, people do think, oh, maybe you're not going to promise you and, and then you're going to vote for you at the end of the day. You're not going to do anything. But uh, see the difference. I would want you to, since you gave everyone, such, everyone a chance, give me a chance as well and see the difference I will make. As I am giving my word that I will make a difference. I will do the best I can mm -hmm. to deliver my services to other people. All right. Well, we wish you all the best Thank uh, you so in your much. campaign. <laughs> uh, this is Paul Breakfast here on Citizen TV. And a little bit earlier, I promised you some gift vouchers because it is Valentine's Day tomorrow. Java House have been kind enough uh, to provide us with two pairs of uh, vouchers for you and a date to go and enjoy a meal at Java House. Now, the question I had asked earlier was, the very first Java House that was uh, opened in Kenya, where was it? The correct answer is uh, Adam's Arcade. Uh, and I do have a winner here on SNS. That's 22422. Jackson Manuela, your number ends in 130. You got that absolutely correct. Uh, you even had the year. It was open in 1999. Okay, you did a little bit of extra, extra research there. So congratulations to you, Jackson. You win uh, a pair of uh, tickets to go enjoy a meal at Java House. And our other winner, uh, by a uh, 
Twitter uh, is uh, Edu Demox. Your number ends in 711. You got that correct. You said uh, Adams Arcade along Gong Road. All right. So congratulations to you both. We'll be in touch about how you can go ahead and get your vouchers and enjoy your Valentine's Day. Thank you so much for watching Power Breakfast this morning. On behalf of myself, Willis Arburu, and Charles Odiambo, we'll see you back here tomorrow morning.